What's up everybody? Welcome back. It's been a super long time since I've gotten a chance to put anything up on YouTube, but we're back. I finally got my own camera and uh, we're ready to start getting this rolling again. Finally able to get some more content put up. As you can see, it's a little different in here than it used to be. And this isn't my RX-7 or my Supra. We unfortunately have made the decision to stop all progress in this garage. I've gotten in a little bit of trouble with the city and with my neighbors and unfortunately the city of Minneapolis isn't a huge fan of what we do and we've been getting a lot of complaints about like the loud noises from the impacts and lights and stuff like that and us being up really late working on cars and evidently in Minneapolis you're not allowed to do anything other than a brake change in your driveway which kind of contradicts a lot of the things that we do so we had to make a decision, and that decision was to move the shop. It's a little far away, but it's, you know, the price you pay to be able to use power tools into the night and not really have to worry about any, you know, neighbors complaining on you for welding stuff in the middle of the night, having all the bright lights and everything like that. So we're gonna go check that out. I'm gonna jump in the car, we're gonna drive up there. I gotta stop and get some food because I'm hungry. But we'll see you guys up there. Jake and Brian are both gonna meet us up there too, so that'll be pretty sick. Brian? What's up, buddy? It's been a while. Oh, you even got me. <laughs> it's good to see you, gentlemen. Good to see you, too. We are officially on the way with my girlfriend. We're gonna meet Jake and Brian up there, like I said. So I figured I'd take like two seconds to kind of explain a little bit more of what happened. Um, as I said before, the city of Minneapolis and our neighbors are not super happy with us. They don't really appreciate what we do. So through a very good friend of mine who actually just recently bought property up here, um, I was able to get a 1200 square foot shop with a lift for a reasonable amount a month. So we, uh, we've been, that's been in the works for a really long time and, and, and we've been kind of working on getting that going for a while now and putting a lot of money into a lot of things other than cars. So it's been difficult to kind of keep up with filming. And I was working with another person with, that was helping me along with the YouTube channel and helping me do a lot of the editing and filming. And she has had so many other things to do and she's super busy where it, it wasn't really working out super well. So I finally, like I said, I went out and got my own camera. So I've got something to film with. Um, hopefully audio should be a little bit better this time around because I've got actually a little attachment for this GoPro that makes sound a lot better. So that's a plus there, but we're gonna kind of try to jump back into things here and try to get some more content out for you guys. We're gonna go check out the Supra today because that has changed a lot since we've got our last video out. Um, it's got a completely different motor in it. It's getting a completely different transmission. It's pretty much completely different. I mean, it's a different car at this point, so it'll be really exciting to show you guys that on video instead of just on Instagram posts. And for those of you guys following the Facebook channel and the Instagram channel, um, A, thank you a ton for sticking around. I know it's been kind of boring without having something to watch, but um, you guys will finally get to see in video kind of what we've been working on there. There's also new people on board too. I know you guys know Jake, you know Mike, and you know Brian. Um, none of you guys have ever seen Nick in a video, or Sergio for that matter. So I mean, there's a couple new projects floating about that I think would be really cool to get on video here too. One of them is actually on the way to the shop right now. He's a little bit behind us. But um, when we get there, we'll kind of look into that a little bit too. I'm hoping today we'll be able to put the rear end back in the Supra to get it off of the lift so we can uh, actually tear into this new uh this new truck a little bit i think i did make a video a little bit back where this where he brought the truck over but i don't know if it was in the video at all so i'm really excited to kind of show you guys that project and uh kind of introduce brian there a little bit more because he was in our first video but since then he hasn't been able to get around brian does uh he, he drives trucks for a living so as you can imagine he's super busy but um i got him for the day so we'll, we'll 
wanted to check that out too. So we'll probably be there in about 20 minutes and we'll check stuff out. We're here. Man, I'm excited to show you guys this. It's pretty cool. We could not be happier with the setup that we have out here. We've already got one car. We gotta get rid of some stuff over here so we can uh, get some more of the other projects. This is actually one that you guys probably haven't seen yet. This is another Dodge Ram 50. I think this is an 87 through 80, one, either an 87, 88, or 89. It's one of those years I know, and I got, if you guys remember the old front bumper off the Supra, I'm excited you guys will get to see just how much that's changed. I actually think they're here. If you can hear the turbo spool in the background, Jake and Brian just showed up. We'll be able to walk in together. But this is Jake's new uh, daily driver. So this will be getting the motor out of his current car when we get the Stereon motor back for his project car, which is a red version of one of these. But this is what's cool. Meet Dudley. <laughs> Doing a little worse now. Nice truck. Cr crude and unusual has a new uh, playground. We we actually haven't even gone in yet, so you guys are just on time. Let's go check the shop out. This is it. Dude, it smells like pizza. It does. It's a little dark in here right now, but we've got it a little bit of the way set up, not all of the way set up, so we have a little bit more to do, but check it out. Poop rough. Whoa. So for those of you wondering why there's tarp hanging from the ceiling and I have a blow-up mattress up here, we are basically renovating this entire building. When I was speaking about insulation earlier, we're going to obviously be insulating the ceiling. We're going to be insulating the walls. This little area here actually is going to be built into a small bedroom, whereas this is going to be our little meat room and I of course bought a TV for up here, got a little stand, a little power strip. There's a little bit more wiring and stuff we got to get done, but we have a hundred serviceable amps in here, so that's pretty cool. Excuse me, a hundred servicing amps in here, so we should be able to get quite a bit more power than we had at the old shop. Shouldn't have too much of a problem running the welders. And like I said, guys, the Supra has changed immensely since the last time we looked at it. I have new fenders on it. I I still have to get these uh, little corners put on. I have the post facelift front bumper for it up there. And then, of course, all of the turbo goodies here. A lot of these look familiar as I borrowed them from the white project that 
Well, there's a long story on that, and if you care to catch up on it, you can always check out our Instagram and Facebook page. But this is my domain. This is where I build all the motors and all that good stuff. I have all my stuff lined up up here, some stuff for this RX-7 build, and our fabricator Jake has all of his space that he could need over here to get his stuff done. So, just a little bit more in the way of messing with the shop, getting the insulation done and the wiring done, and we'll be in business. Um, I've got one of my guys set up here already, hoping Brian can get a set of tools up here pretty soon to get a spot set up over here, and we'll be in business. But, what do you think, man? It's pretty sick, man. I'm saying this lots is and lots of room for activities. Yes, more than more than enough room for activities. And one of the greatest parts is I love this door. It's it's so much better than our previous space. The lighting is better. I'm not working in a garage. And, and I don't have whole neighbors here. here. So we're doing really well. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just like the no neighbors part. That that's my favorite part. I swear, if I had to get yelled at one more time by the city of Minneapolis, well, we're not going to go there. <laughs> Please. I think today's going to be a little bit of a kind of a jumble. We're up here to hopefully get this uh, bad boy put back on uh, four wheels here. As it's sitting right now, it's going over a little bit of an overhaul. I actually had completed the swap and I had the turbo motor in the car and everything was running. I was tuning everything off an SAFC and it was actually working pretty good, but the clutch that I was running spun and I mean, it, it, it wasn't holding very much power in the first place anyway. I kind of already saw that coming. So when we took everything apart, I decided, well, let, let's get rid of the uh, W58 that we had in it. And we went out and we picked up a R154 with a Marlin Crawler kit in it, uh, their short throw shifter. Um, I still need to get a drive shaft for it, but that'll come. And a clutch. This was the clutch that I got from the gentleman that I actually bought the motor from. Shout out to ND Drift. If you guys are interested in that, check it out. Their page is super sick. They do a lot of super cool stuff out there. But he gave me this clutch as well, which is a little fried, but maybe it'll work. Maybe we'll get a new one. We'll see. I'm not quite ready to put this back in as my subframe is sitting right here. I actually have a fella by the name of Panda Built Fabrications making me a dual caliper bracket for this rear end so I can go ahead and finish getting my hydro brake put in. Uh, we actually have, well you can't see it because I have a blanket in there, but I actually have a hydro brake set up with a wood master. Uh, I just need to run the line to the back and then get the the SE 300 or 400 calipers, I don't remember. I think they're the same thing or the same caliper for the rear. But get those calipers and get them on there along with the bracket. And uh, we should be all right to run a line back there. And then of course I have my solid subframe bushings for the rear end of the Super to make sure that it doesn't walk around. There you go. And then just to set up for control arms and uh, lowers and we should be all good to go there. I think the next big thing, once we get everything going, is I'd like to get rid of these, uh, these are Tokiko shocks with uh, Ebok springs and or Ibok, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. They're a little tired. They work real, they work a lot better than what was in there when you guys saw this car with an automatic in it. They are different shocks than they were back then, but they're still, I also borrowed these off the white car, so they're still a little tired, a little rusty, and but they'll work for now. Got a lot of the engine bay cleaned up in here, and I gotta run an and line for my high pressure fuel hose up there because I don't like banjo bolts. <clears throat> and for any of you Mark III guys, where the fuel line comes up, it goes to like this little block that sits here, and there's a banjo bolt in the bottom and a banjo bolt in the top, and it's annoying. I hate crush washers, I hate banjo bolts. I don't like this, and since I've got the different injectors in there and I'm running an aftermarket fuel pressure regulator, I don't need... I, I think this is something to do with, like, fuel pulses or something like that, or it's supposed to, like, smooth out what's in the rail, but with the regulator that I have, I don't necessarily need that anymore. So Drift Motion sells a kit to convert this into a hard line, or I'm just going to find the correct fitting from Vibrant Performance and get an actual A-line ran and just be fine with it. 
But other than that, that's pretty much the majority of the changes in the car. We're just getting a different transmission put in it and obviously putting this turbo motor in it. This is a uh, stock bottom end with a drift motion oil pump in it. It's a CT2660 turbocharger upgrade. Other than that, I mean, it's a brand new valve train with a brand new cam, but it's all stock. Um, I got really lucky in that department. It is not an MLS head gasket, which I am a little worried about, but it does have ARP hardware on the top end that is torqued to the proper torque spec, so I'm not, a, I'm not super concerned. It wasn't necessarily the material that failed in the first place from all the research that I've done. It was more just the actual torque spec on the head, and since that's been uh, rectified, we should see pretty good success with this motor. It, it, it drove very well uh, when we had it in there with the W58 and, and that clutch, but that clutch was uh, obviously not strong enough to hold the amount of power that it made. It pulled really well until the clutch slipped. So I'm really excited to get the new transmission in there and get a new clutch for it because I think this thing is going to be one of the faster cars I've ever built. But I guess I'm only saying that because the RX-7's not together and if anyone's been following that project, that's getting a pretty pretty built 4G63 put in it with uh, this KM 132 transmission that I have over here. And that's gonna be our weak link. So pretty much gonna be able to make the amount of power that that thing will handle, because the 4G will handle a thousand horsepower. And well, we'll get there when we get there, but I'm gonna rally the troops together. We're gonna start cooking, make some steaks, and then get to work here. Looks good. It's my taco. Unfortunately right now that bullet heater is how we're heating this place. So it gets kind of loud. There's really not much I can do about that while we're heating in here. Once uh, I think it's warm we'll turn it off for filming purposes but for, for this little segment you might just end up having to deal with it. Lowered the super down a little bit just to show you guys a little bit what's going on. I'm not a lot visible at the moment. So we have a drift motion three inch core intercooler. Uh, a piping set that I actually think we originally bought for a DSM that I just kind of repurposed to use for this project. We're making food so a lot of stuff laying around. That's the new front clip. I actually now you've noticed I have two headlights instead of uh, just one intake got a down pipe I still have to make an exhaust so that is going to be the probably the next thing after we get everything reassembled is to actually get an exhaust put in it because it is very loud got an NRG seat in here not the greatest seat in the world but it does what I need it to do and I made just a quick like mock-up there's a blanket in here because I've slept up here a couple weekends but I made a mock-up little seatbelt bar back there it's not anything that i'd want to get in a crash with but it just to hold the belts in place so i could know like where would be a good place to mount that bar for seatbelt length and everything and that seems to be doing pretty good this was the uh handbrake that we have put in here little guy up here with a willwood cylinder here i actually got this from a guy that i used to play judo with a long time ago so he gave me a very good deal on this we basically just welded two plates which you probably can't see together down here that jotted out the side and we ended up trimming down here to make this fit but actually i really like it it's a little far away so it's a little bit of a reach but it's nothing major i i, I am sitting rather far from the steering wheel right now so like but once i'm sitting up closer here my seat rails are a little messed up i'll be able to grab it no problem got my innovate wideband slash boost gauge up here this thing is super nice if anybody's looking for a really easy to install nice plug and play system I would highly recommend the SCG1 uh, boost controller and AFR by Innovate Motorsports. This thing is freaking sweet. And then obviously just a standard analog boost gauge. I like I like the look of having this. Granted, I'll never really ever look at this while I have this. Kind of just like seeing this go up and down. Guilty pleasure. Make fun of me, whatever. What you should be making fun of me for is this. I feel like I'm stuck in a, like a Fast and Furious movie because this is very old technology. This is an SAFC, it's a super airflow converter. Essentially it just interrupts the mass airflow signal and it, uh, I believe, I don't know really what it does, I know how to tune it, but I think it's just fuel tables for the most part. I don't think this directly controls ignition at all. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments, 
but I don't know. I know these are really old and it's kind of a primitive way of doing things, but it, it works for this situation. For anybody that knows Mark III Supras, essentially what I did is kind of a tried and true thing that people have been doing with these cars for a long time. It's a 550cc injector, a uh, Lexus AFM, you do a SAFC and like a 58 to 60 to, uh, trim turbo upgrade in the CT26. 60 and then it's just a 320 LPH uh, fuel pump in the back. So it's pretty much exactly what I did. It's an AM 320 LPH pump in the back and it runs through my Bosch 550cc low impedance injectors that I got off drift. Pretty much everything I've gotten off of drift motion. That dude Aaron over there has been super cool. But that's pretty much it for what's going on with this one until uh, we can actually afford to step it up and go a little bit farther with it. It's probably just going to remain at that low 400 number. And that that's that's good. That's really all I really want out of this thing. I just want something I can go out there and practice and drift around in. And, and I think uh, 400 horsepower Mark III will do that very well, especially with the hydro brake and uh, everything else that we've done. The suspension, getting the rear end put back together properly with the correct bushings and... Uh, the right control arms and the right tires and wheels I think we'll do just fine so if you're ever wondering why the real reason why we got a shop way out here is so that we can make delicious food in peace Ooh. yep without PETA interjecting oh god Oof. look at that it's time to dig in ah This is why we never get anything done. Huh? This is why we never get anything done. <laughs> you brought the toy. So we definitely came here with the plan on working, but it's it's looking like we may have uh, spent too much time enjoying steaks to get anything done. On top of that, fact. Yeah, we don't have a ton to do. For the most part, I really just wanted to bring you guys up here and show you what's going on, show you the new shop, and uh, kind of just reinvigorate the the, uh, the channel. Just get another video up here for you guys, see that we're not gone forever. And, uh, Sponsored by Freedom. Indeed. Sponsored by Freedom. I love it. Apart from the Supra, we're probably going to get to Jake's project next, and then we're more than likely going to move on to getting a little bit of content out there with Brian. But for now, it looks like we're going to end this video on that note thank you everybody for watching if you guys like stick around there'll be a ton more content on this car and the trucks and everything and of course these jokers crude and unusual will be back in the next episode thank you guys